continued hearing on House Bill 262 relative to beverage manufacturers. Uh, for a reminder, these hearings were continued to allow those individuals who could not travel on a terribly day to get down here. We wanted to make sure all voices have been heard. And I will uh, call Mr. S Carl Sauterson. Gentlemen, I will, in the, in the interest of brevity, and I believe there are a number of people who wish to speak on this, uh, this bill, I will keep my remarks brief. I was the owner of a beer brewery for some time, and I, the operative term is was. We have since gone out of business, and it would have been exceedingly beneficial to us, and we might have had a, a chance to stay in business a little bit longer if there were not so many restrictions on how much beer we could sell uh, to uh, directly to, to people without having to go through distributors. Um, there are, of course, many factors in, in, in an economy, but uh, it does seem rather silly that uh, a, a beer brewer is not allowed to sell more than basically one case or one keg to directly to, to interested persons where that same person could simply go down the street to a to a liquor store and buy as much beer as they as they wanted to. The difference is that buying the beer at the liquor store, it has to go through it has to go from the brewer to a distributor and then to the liquor store. Uh, it is not uh, it's not so easy to simply cut out the middleman and sell directly from the brewer to the uh, to the interested party. So I'm here to support HB 262. And uh, please vote in favor. Any questions from the committee? Thank you. The discussion in the prior hearing um, and several features of this bill um, prompt uh, if you were allowed to sell two cases, mm -hmm. is that a meaningful relaxation? No. That is a difference of degree and not a difference of type. Thank you, Madam Chair. Representative Pratt, Pratt, forgive me for interrupting you. I just realized why I'm so cold. <laughs> <laughs> I will continue. I'm the members of the yeah. My name is Calvin Pratt. I'm a representative from Hills Girl 7, representing the town of Goss Town and Weir. Um, I'm introducing this uh, bill, uh, 262, at the request of the constituent, who is a brewer. Um, this bill has been worked extensively by the Liquor Commission, as well as myself and my co sponsor, Representative Warden. Uh, the very first part of it, if I can just call your attention to the first three lines was retained from the original version of the bill because we felt, as the previous speaker did, that this particular restriction changes the risk-reward uh, ratio of opening one of these sorts of enterprises toward, more toward risk and that for a small operation like this, not being able to sell, not being able to to let a customer walk out with two or three cases, especially in the, you know, in the case where they might be out of state, was uh, paramount to the success of these sort of operations. These are very small nano breweries, which is a type of microbrewery which has become very popular around the United States now. So that particular portion, although we think that this particular rule is important for this type of brewery, after further conversations with the Liquor Commissions, I would have no objections whatsoever if you were to take this and perhaps put it into section one down below to make it clear, although I'm assured by the Liquor Commission that the language in section one 
already makes it clear that this is a new type of license and that all beer manufacturers would not be affected by this. But I, I and my co-sponsor and the constituent who asked me to put this in request that that be put into Section 1 if you decide not to change the general RSA for all beer manufacturers. We would not have any problem with that whatsoever. So if you take those three lines out, that brings us to the actual new section, which was 90% authored by the Liquor Commission. I, I believe uh, Chief Edwards behind me is the author of that. Kudos to the author. All, almost all the rest of this sim simply explains what a nano brewery license entails. At the present time, there is no provision for a brewery of this size. This type of brewery would make an, an excellent entry-level position for many of the small brewers that are already amateur brewers in their barns now that might like to go into this sort of enterprise. The very first part of the nano brewery license section simply uh, says that this is the limitation. They can only do 2,000 barrels annually for sale. This includes retail or host sale, uh, defines the public building uh, under RSA 175.1, which you know requires that they have a, a building that can be inspected, uh, provides for gallon uh, fees. The next section provides for the actual fee for uh, the license. This is all basic housekeeping type language. The rest of section two pertains to how the nano brewery license shall be paid. Then it goes on to explain uh, no beverage or liquor may be served on premises and also other restrictions concerning the use and service of the beverages there and how much, uh, what age and limits. The rest of this is all basically housekeeping. And finally, it uh, adds at section four, the nano brewery license shall have the right to transport beverages which is a provision that uh, this committee put into effect several years ago, which allows small businesses like this to essentially transport and distribute their own beverages, since in many cases the larger distributors, which act as a middleman between these kinds of manufacturers and the general public, have no interest in carrying products of this size. So this allows them to either sell on-premises to uh, sell through distribution, their own distribution vehicles, and assures that the rewards of opening this kind of business is a little bit uh, more in balance with the risk factor entailed in undertaking any kind of entrepreneurial enterprise. So if you have any questions, I would be more than happy to do what I could to answer them. There are a lot of professionals behind me that can answer the more technical details. Thanks, Pratt. Um, back to the beginning of your comments, you're referring to um, Line two, and moving line two to where? Well, actually, confused as to what line you wanted to see shifted where. Uh, the section that was struck. Uh, the way that we had originally crafted the bill, we had tried to change uh, three sections of the existing RSAs to accommodate a small enterprise of this sort. After uh, talking with the Liquor Commission, uh, they said that it would be better to create a new section with specific rules for the operation of a nano brewery, because the present rules don't allow for it. A uh, brew plug pub is not a microbrewery, it's not a nano brewery, it's a different type of operation. As, as well you know, the larger brewers are much different operations than what we're proposing here. So the Liquor Commission said it would be better if we just had our own separate section that defines what a nano brewery is. If we did have that, there's a chance that more people would find it attractive to pay the 240 license instead of a $1,200 license. Uh, a 2,000 barrel limit is not that much more restricted than the microbrewery's 2,500 barrel limit, but there are specific differences between the brewery laws you have now and what we're proposing here. The one area that we thought needed to be clarified, although uh, Chief Edwards might speak to this, Section 1 presumably allows what we want in the quantities, it removes that quantity limitation, but it doesn't actually spell that out in, in this particular literature. I would like to take that struct section and if you can think of some way to amend it or would have me come to the subcommittee with an amendment, we would like that put in possibly Section 1. So it clearly states that 
if somebody wants to come into the, the premises and walk out with more than one keg or more than 24 or 12 ounce bottles, they're allowed to sell to them at the increased quantities. I'm thinking particularly if, if this product becomes popular with somebody in Maine or Massachusetts who makes a trip up here to buy some, they would probably like to take home more than one. Section one, then lifting the limitation for the nano brewery to sell right out, out the door two, three, four cases to a single customer in a single day is exactly what we want for that business. So if you were to take the language, the struck language, you, and moved it to section one, you wouldn't be striking it out. You would just, just be saying this does not apply to nano breweries and nano breweries alone. As it reads now, this would apply to all distributors. Are, are to all manufacturers of all sizes. And that, I believe, although Chief Edwards can clarify this, I think that is what they object to. <laughs> uh, Chief Edwards, as I said, can probably explain it with greater clarity. He understands the RSAs much better than I do. I can't find my notes, but we also have the Section, I believe it's line nine. The licensee shall entitle it to sell at retail or wholesale only beverages manufactured. Given that this is a new section, as I understand it, and as it was explained to me by the Liquor Commission, that covers the, the sale of the beverages in the facility. Uh, if you wanted to limit the quantities, such as saying, uh, We'd originally had a provision in here that said you could sell no more than two pints to a single customer in a single day. Then that might possibly address your concern. Uh, as far as the sales go, there are no restrictions to sales of samples now, or uh, if there are restrictions, they're practiced piecemeal, because there are uh, wineries, for instance, in which you can go in and uh, go to a wine tasting, and they charge a fee for the wine tasting. Now, they may be avoiding that particular requirement by saying this is an event fee rather than a beverage fee, but I imagine there might be ways to circumvent having to give away the beverages. Um, I don't know, does that answer or satisfy? I can probably get more clarity if you want me to keep talking. <laughs> saying we want to be able to charge for the samples and there was some testimony saying no we shouldn't allow that because we don't allow a big blue to charge for it. And you have to love the playing field. So I just wonder if anybody took that discussion as we had at the last uh, hearing and tried to find some language that would give a nano brewer permission to sell their sample while not allowing a large brewery to sell their sample. Uh, again, as it was explained to me, this language, this new language that pertains to nano breweries, specifically says what they can and cannot do. The language that pertains to the general beverage manufacturer 
This language would exclude that language, and there is an actual RSA. It was one of the sections we originally had intended to modify in our first version of the bill, in which the Liquor Commission said, well, please don't do that. We only want the nano, you know, we don't want all the, like, as you said, we don't want the big manufacturers being able to set up shop and sell as much of their, their product as they want at the brewery. We agreed to that and we took it away. If I can find the old language of the bill, our original language, which I still have at home, I'll be happy to come to the subcommittee and bring you that one. <coughs> um, I, is, would this be some kind of a separate license to sell samples? Because I think in our liquor laws, you, in order to have a license to sell, you have to sell food too. And for all my confusing, I think. Your uh, uh, 19 and 20 does address the food issue. One of the things that we wanted to do was not have the liquor commission's uh, regulations define all nano brewery operations, so that individuals can decide how they wanted to market their product and what sort of environment they wanted to market it. So one of these nano breweries could, for instance, form a partnership with, a, let's say you're in a mini mall and you've got your brewery set up there, and perhaps there's food manufacturers within our restaurateurs within the area that might want to form a partnership with the nano brewery and actually deliver food or perhaps make products available there. However, what we wanted to do with the nano brewery bill was to stay away from the restaurant food service side of it because the idea is to create a um, inexpensive or relatively inexpensive entry level uh, operation for brewing. And once you go into the restaurant and food service side, you're talking a considerably greater expense and a whole new skill set that the individual would need to bring. So we, we wanted to make it available, but we did not want to say you must have food service in, in, in your nano brewery if you're going to serve the public. We wanted to leave that option. And that's what the language in line 19 and 20 attempts to do. Further questions? Thank you, Representative. Thank you. Mr. Mudge? Hi. Uh, my, uh, my name is Edwin Mudge. I'm uh, going to address uh, the issue of uh, striking this uh, uh, text on line 2 and 3. Um, my, my background is in, in emerging technologies. That's my specialty, and I spend large amounts of time developing technology. I've, I have a, a brew tank and keg system that I've spent two and a half years of my time developing that I'm trying to bring to market. And with this kind of language in this bill, the, the target market for my technology, which is micro, nano, <coughs> excuse me, nano and micro tank technology, uh, is limited in what they can sell. They're limited in how much they can how much uh, they can use of my technology. They're limited in the amount of my technology <coughs> they can uh, afford to upgrade if they can't sell enough of their product. So this uh, bill really uh, hurts my ability to bring my technology to market. I, I have, I'd have an almost impossible time of getting funding for, for, my, my, uh, for manufacturing of my product in this state with this kind of language in this bill. I'm a little confused. Can you show me which, which part you're addressing? The limitation on uh, the limitation on uh, not not the language in the bill, but the uh, with with the language in the uh, the previous bill that's being struck in this bill. Which language? The, I'm sorry. Uh, in quantities not uh, to exceed uh, a single 
a 15.5 gallon uh, keg or the equivalent of one ease of 12 ounce containers per person per day. Uh, not uh, striking or not striking this language from this uh, bill uh, leaves a limit, limitation on the business that negatively affects uh, the implementation of my business. So you're in support of the bill as it is? As it is, yes. Yes. I, I'd like to see this language uh, struck, this, this, uh, that this bill is uh, attempting to amend. In other words, I'm in favor of the amendment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the question. You're welcome. Annette Lee and I am uh, opening a brewery in Northampton called Throwback Brewery. Um, my brewery is very small by industry standards. Um, I'm hoping to produce about 10,000 gallons um, in the first year or so um, in comparison to what a typical um, microbrewery might be in the range of like 80 to 100,000 uh, gallons per year. Um, I at Throwback, we, um, we really want to honor the agricultural aspects of beer, and we're doing that by working with our New Hampshire farmers to source uh, the ingredients that we're going to use to um, make the beer. And this motivation uh, comes from a passion to um, support local agriculture and to um, uh, support our local economy, because I really believe that um, the growth of small business here is uh, a lot of long-term way to create a stable, a stable economy. Um, my decision to start this small uh, was based on a lot of factors, but uh, primarily their economic, um, economic uh, constraints. Uh, House Bill 262 would um, would allow me would alleviate some of these constraints um, with the key components that are that were introduced. Uh, the reduced fee would right away give me um, some extra money to um, invest in equipment or even uh, hiring help. Um, as a one or two person company, um, I wear a lot of hats and the work is unending. Uh, so the, you know, the sooner that I can uh, get help, the, the better off the company will be and the, the better I'll be able to grow. Um, the ability to serve beer um, directly to the consumer from the brewery um, to charge for beer. Uh, that's a critical uh, direct source of income for a small business like mine. Um, it is a volume uh, type business and um, you know at the beginning phases especially when I'm when I'm small like this uh, that line of income is, is really going to be important. It also gives me a way to connect with people. Uh, as everybody knows long-term success in a business is about relationships and being able to really um, connect with people that are interested in your product, interested in your uh, process is, is going to help me um, and other other businesses like mine um, continue to grow. Um, the opportunity to sell packaged beer um, without quantity limits from the brewery is another uh, great source of income for a, a brewery like mine. Um, we've seen more and more uh, people um, plan their vacations around craft beer, and New Hampshire has um, several destination spots that are craft breweries. Um, so by allowing breweries to sell their packaged beer uh, for people to take away, uh, that's, that's a boost to our, our tourism industry, which, which I think is a, is a good way to, to boost that. Um, the craft beer segment itself has, has seen market increase over the last five years, double digit increase. Um, and we continue to see that today. Uh, so House Bill 262 would allow small brewers like mine um, to um, an opportunity to bring more of that craft beer growth to New Hampshire um, and to our economy. Additionally, I'd like to um, take the time to ask you to consider an amendment to uh, the bill, and that would be to allow beer to be sold at the farmers markets in New Hampshire. Um, wine manufacturers currently can use farmers markets as an additional retail source for their beer, and um, by giving beer manufacturers that same opportunity, 
um, you know, makes it a little more equitable. It also um, has a lot of potential to enhance the farmer's market experience. And this is through um, providing additional variety of New Hampshire made products, um, which um, may increase the number of people coming to these markets, which ultimately is going to support the farmers um, through additional you know, commerce activity of the markets. Uh, it also allows, again, a brewer to connect with their consumers. It's just more and more we see people wanting to know where their food comes from, how it's grown, um, how it's made, and, uh, and beer is not an exception uh, for that. So I, uh, I thank you again for your time, and I, I hope you'll consider uh, the merits of uh, House Bill 262. Any questions? Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I might have missed something, but isn't this about nano? With 2,000 gallon limit? Yes. Sorry, it's a 2,000 barrel, and I they probably confused you there. So I said 10,000 okay. gallons, and so it's equivalent to uh, 2,000 barrels is about 16,000 gallons. So, okay. so I would be well under that. Yeah, sorry about that. I should use barrels. Further questions? Representative Sullivan. Morrow. Uh, I'll ask you this question. We can get it on the table and have other people consider. I noticed that I reread and reread this that there's no prohibition against a nano brewery selling beer that it didn't manufacture. Uh, there's language here about transporting beverage it manufactures uh, and about what it can brew, but there is a little bit of a hole that doesn't say that you can't sell beer that you don't make. Okay. If we were to craft language that restricted you to the sale of beer you made from your yeah. outlet. Is yeah. that a problem for you, or would you find that acceptable? No, I mean, I, I personally would find that acceptable. I believe, um, and I don't have it in front of me what line it is, but there is something about the beer that would be served uh, directly from the brewery um, is only beverages that the brewer would make there. So. As far as serving directly, it's there. I, you know, I'm not sure about. Maybe others can talk to selling it retail-wise. But yeah. Um. yeah. Without getting into executive session, sure. I, I read that language, and it, that talks about beer served or consumed, not beer sold. So you have a case of beer you want to sell yeah. to oh, the okay, yeah. store. It, I'm saying it ought to be the beer you brew that night. I wouldn't be opposed to being one of my own beverages. Seeing none, we will close the hearing on House Bill 262. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you have words now. You know much better. Our one hand is a big part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do, yeah. Thank you. Last time. I, and it's, it's different? pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Women, Committee members. For the record, my name is Ed Gettys. I'm the uh, Director of Enforcement and Licensing for the Ohio State Liquor Commission. Um, Representative Pratt is correct. Uh, we work, uh, we work with him quite a bit uh, to craft his legislation. Initially, uh, the initial uh, language uh, concerned this brick uh, quite heavily, really. Um, it allowed uh, large manufacturers to uh, enter the marketplace that really would be disrupted to smaller manufacturers. So when we met, we came up with the, the nano brewery license as a way to allow a small manufacturer to enter the marketplace with some limitations. And those limitations uh, are to protect uh, their right to engage in, in, in the business. Some of the, some of the areas of concern for us really pushes this from a manufacturer's license to something that looks like a bar license. So those are some of the concerns. Um, so this bill is to allow nano brewers to brew alcohol, I mean beer, I'm sorry, to brew uh, beer and sell it. Uh, 
as much as they want, but we're not opposed to any, uh, having a limitation on nano breweries. Um, so we believe that the language is clearly reflects that. Because in every area of this, uh, Title 13, there is no limitation on what you can serve or sell unless it's specifically written into the statute. Um, other areas, for instance, restaurants, there's no limitation on, on what they can sell and serve. It just says they're allowed to sell alcohol. Nano breweries is the same. It's written the same way here. They're allowed to sell their product to the general public and licensees. There's no limitation on what they can sell to the general public. That's on line eight. The existing language that's found on line two and three uh, applies to large manufacturers. That language uh, we would uh, ask to remain. The language that uh, the provision that the nano brewery receive allows them to sell as much as they want. That would not pertain to them. This is a separate license being created specifically for nano breweries. And so under, the, under this license, they would be allowed to operate with these provisions that are specifically listed here. The other areas of statute would not apply to this. Not $2,000. They got to a point where they were able to, and that's been my conversation. Is that like where they hit to go to the next level for licensing? Yes, ma'am. Right. So if you take it like a brew pub right now, most brew pubs are limited, uh, they are limited to 2,500 barrels. Most brew pubs in the state never reach 2,500 barrels. And they sell a lot of their product. They just never get to. That, we're talking about quite a bit of alcohol to get to 2,000 barrels of alcohol. Uh, but the idea here is to, uh, is to put incentives in place to allow them to grow their business. So that's why we advocate for no restrictions on how much they can sell to the general public from their facility. Uh, that's why the language was written that way. They can sell to the general public and licensees as well, directly, without any limitations on them. Uh, the limitation is, is put at the higher level of a manufacturer. Because if you take that out, that means Anheuser-Busch currently doesn't do it. But they easily could if you took that provision out. And so we don't want uh, to create an imbalance in a system where you have a large manufacturer competing in an open market with a smaller manufacturer. Because what you're trying to prevent, trying to nurture, having a small nano brewery come to life and sell their product would never happen. Because if it's true, that nano brewers have gained a double digit share of the market. By removing these restrictions, you now allow a manufacturer like Anheuser Bush to come in and address that issue. Because they can easily swing the market back. The reason they, they don't is because they're prohibited from doing so. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a uh, unrelated follow up if you'll allow it. Um, Do you have a question for witness, sir? Yes. Um, and just so the ma I, I can get my head around the map, 2,000 barrels equals 6,000 gallons, which equals about 57,600 12 ounce beers. Is that correct? Something like that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, 6,000 or 60,000? 6, 6,000 gallons is what I heard. Is that correct? 60,000? 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, Okay, so there it would be 576,000 beers then. Right. Okay. Uh, and this is totally unrelated. I just wanted to figure out that number. But um, seg lines one through three on here that we've been discussing, if we completely eliminated those from this bill in an amendment, would it would that be the solution you'd be seeking, and would that cause any problems for the sponsors? It's my understanding that the constituents who approached the sponsors wanted to sell unlimited amount of their product they manufacture. Up to 2,000 barrels. Up to 2,000 barrels before they went to another category. Right. We believe eight, line eight accomplishes that task. They do not. They think by keeping lines two and three in place, 
they would be prohibited from selling as much as they wanted to. But line eight allows them to sell as much as they want to the general public and licensees. Line two and three are necessary to prevent a larger manufacturer from overtaking these smaller operators. So I, I think that answers my question in the, firm, in the affirmative, doesn't it? I think what he's trying to, if, forgive me if I may, I believe what he's trying to indicate is isn't, isn't lines two and three already in existing statute. So the ruling that from the bill offers them no change, they simply are in the statute. Yes. yes. And then the, just to clarify further, this nano brewery license is being created in 6 to 28, the rest of the bill essentially, that would not, the, the lines one through three wouldn't apply to that nano brewery license, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well, thank you. Representative Slaughter? Could you address the issue of serving samples? Because if you wouldn't mind. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Because um, when you came before us before, you had some concern about the charging of it. And what I'm hearing from the small ones is, unlike the larger ones who can give free beer away and it hardly makes a dent, they could be given away half their product. Right. And so, so they do need to charge. And, and we're not opposed to charging. That's why the no. initially, initially the language was to allow them to charge the sample. That causes problems because other areas of statute, <laughs> sampling and tastings have to be free to conduct on licensed establishments. So this will allow for them to, to charge for on-premise consumption. So we simply change sampling to on-premise consumption. Now the problem that this creates is that without a limitation on that, that's why we've asked for a limitation to be set on how much sampling you can provide. Because without a limitation on on-premise sampling or on-premise consumption, you've created, effectively created a bar. So you've taken a nano brewery license and created a bar. Um, and, and now let's get into the area where other restaurants are who are required to have food, who are required to have a whole host of things. Even the larger beer manufacturers, they can apply for a restaurant license, pay the restaurant license fee, and operate the restaurant on their premises. So nano brewers have a lot of special privileges that we would endorse as a way to get them started in the business, but not to the extent that it bleeds into other areas of operations. Follow up, follow up, thank you. So I don't, I'm not finding how much they can do in sampling before they cross over to the bar thing. Well, <coughs> is it in here? For instance, sampling sizes are for, for Beverage is four ounces per sample, uh, and that's the goal here. So if they wanted to um, charge for the samples, it would be four ounces every time until you, you couldn't serve to a person to the point where you became intoxicated, obviously. But sampling sizes are smaller, and they're done for the purpose of sampling a product to see if you like it so you can buy it. This on-premise consumption is very different. So you can serve an eight-ounce mug, a 16-ounce mug, unlimited. So I could try, if you have five or six different products, I could try two mugs of each if I like. If I wasn't intoxicated, as long as I wasn't intoxicated. So that, that, that creates the bar issue here. Uh, if the license is for you to manufacture and sell product, then that's a separate category. But when you allow one tier to manufacture, self-distribute, retail sale, and operate an on-premise license, then now you disadvantage every other operating in the system. So if uh, lines 19 and 20 refer to a four ounce glass or a four ounce con suitable container, that would semi-fix the issue, would it not? Yes, ma'am, because it, 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 would, it would be a, a serving, a sample size um, for the purposes of sampling. And then there's simply, a, and that would allow them to sell those. Well, they could sell those, yes. They could charge whatever they wanted to. And there's other existing statutes on the books that prohibit them from serving to the point of excess or serving to the point of reaching the bar level. I mean, what's the limitation on how many four ounces they can sell to one person? There, there is no limitation. The, 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 the only difference would be uh, that 
by having either a, a serving size restriction, you now fit into the same category as everyone else who serves samples. This, this language, the one we supported in, in row, allows for on-premise consumption, so we didn't have to get into the area of samples and, uh, yeah, yeah. for charging for samples. So on-premise consumption puts you in a different category. If you have on-premise consumption, you can charge us whatever you want to, but we just asked for a limitation on that so it doesn't appear that if I want to start a nano brew tomorrow, I have five different brands. I have no limitations on the size that I can serve or the amount I can serve as long as I don't serve to an intoxicated person. That's the exact same privileges now that a <coughs> uh, brew pub has, any restaurant has, but they're required to have food, they're required to have all these other things to have that privilege. So if you don't put some type of category differences in place, now we've disadvantaged uh, brew pubs and restaurants by allowing a, a restaurant to serve alcohol without the benefit of food. Which this, this does bring up a food issue. Where would you put the limitation in this? Where are you, are you missing something in this that there's a limitation, or is there something missing that you want to see that provides for limitation? <coughs> I think we have to do one or two things. Either if we don't have on-premise consumption, then you have, to, you have to have a limitation on what that on-premise consumption will be for the purpose of sampling. If you don't want a limitation on the on-premise, then you have to call it sampling and put a size restriction on sampling. Because if we leave it wide open now, without the benefit of food. Now, one of the ways that we try to make this easier for them to get into business and not have the high overhead costs that everyone else in the market has to have is to say that you could do partnerships with other businesses that serve food and they can bring it on. That does not exist in any other statute. No, nowhere else in the statute is that permitted. So we, we've made a lot of concessions here to allow a small nano brewer to get in place to offer an atmosphere where they can sell their product, but not at the expense of other operators. That's, that's a very difficult question to answer. The reason I say this is because I, I'm not sure we want to get into a, an area where the commission is setting what you can serve, how many samples you can have for a person. The, the, that responsibility belongs to the licensee, to not to over-serve someone and get them intoxicated. We're simply setting the range in which you can serve those samples so that we don't disadvantage another licensee. So if, you, if, they, if they were to operate sort of like a brew pub and had food of their own, had a kitchen operation, they could serve all the alcohol they wanted to. They, they manufacture, but as a way to get them out of that heavy burden, then we have to have some limitations. Otherwise, wh why can't, why wouldn't we allow a nano brewery to do it? Why wouldn't we let a restaurant do it? The, the purpose of this license is to manufacture and promote upsell their product to get it into the marketplace, not to run an on-premise account. Any further questions from the committee? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was wondering, uh, whether there was any, um, whether the uh, the brew pub license covered food uh, consumption as well as alcohol, does it does it broaden the scope to cover the restaurant aspect of the? Okay, so why would there not be a, a problem then in limiting um, this uh, particular entity to just selling beverages as long as food is available? Um, you know, maybe by order in or you bring your own or whatever, whatever it may be. Maybe there's a couple snacks provided. You know, why does it have to be a full service uh, food in order to justify having two different licenses? Uh, oh, no, no. If, if, I, if I communicate that to you, I apologize. That's not yeah. what I intended to do. The nano brewery uh, does not have to have a restaurant. They right. have to have food available when they're serving the Samples. So pretzels. Well, food is defined in Title 13 too, so it wouldn't, pretzels wouldn't count. At one point, we, we count water as food. <laughs> we did. So, uh, and ice. Uh, so, um, so now food has been defined. It has to have a nutritional value. Now, I guess you could argue that it does. I, I'm a fan of Snickers tonight. So, but, um, so it has to be food provided, and they can, they can um, and they can have uh, partnerships with other restaurant owners. That's fine. We're okay with that. It's just 
making sure that we clearly define what a nano brewery is so that anyone who looks at this license category doesn't feel like <coughs> I've put an enormous investment into a restaurant and this place is doing the exact same thing that I'm doing without the overhead or any cost or a nano brewery is getting disadvantaged. Or we create an atmosphere where we disrupt the three-tier system so much that a large manufacturer could come in and essentially overtake one of these smaller places very easily. What's the cost of a uh, brew pub license? I think it's sixteen, uh, one thousand six hundred ninety-two dollars. Further questions from the committee? Yes. Thank you, Chief. Um, to the extent that uh, there are provisions in alcohol law that uh, restrict the sale per day. Limit the ability to charge for samples and uh, constrain the amount of material that can be sampled versus served. Are we better, pardon my use of the word, served in this case to include some specific, three specific exceptions in the nano brewery language dealing with you can sell more than a case, you can charge for your samples and you can serve more than four ounces in a sample. Uh, I would agree with the first two. The third two is if you get to the area where you're serving more than a sample, uh, I mean, samples defined as four ounces. Uh, if you get to eight ounces, 12 ounces, 16 ounces, 18 ounces, 24 ounces, now you're serving like a restaurant would be served. That's, that's no longer a sample. It's for consumption rather than a sample. So if the purpose is to sample, then it has to be a sample time. If the purpose is for consumption, then we need to define that. So that in, in those three instances, uh, some specific language that deals with you can sell more than a case, you can charge for your sample, and your sample size can be no bigger than four ounces. If we put language in like that, is, is, or is that uh, does that deal with your concerns? Yes, sir. And, and, and uh, let me just be clear. I, I think line eight deals with the first one. I, I really do, but if you want clarifying language that makes it read easy for everyone, then that's fine. But uh, line eight really covers that. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Thank you. We'll now close the hearing on HB 262. We'll be keeping this in the um, making business division to work on further.